What's going on? So I finally learned the scientific units that I showed you a while back. So now it's time to actually recall them to show you that I actually learned them. So on the screen, you can see that I have the concepts right here, the unit, and the subunits. And so they're all gone because uh, you know I'm trying to recall it. So of course, I can't have the information in front of me because I'm not recalling it. So I have them all blank. So what I'm going to do is on the in editing, I'm going to put on the side of the screen the actual units. So you can actually see them and see if I'm right or not. Okay? So without further ado, let's get started. So time, of course, is seconds. Distance uh, is meters. Velocity, meters per second. Acceleration, meter per second squared. Mass, kilograms. Um, okay, <laughs> yeah, kilograms. Uh, temperature is Kelvin. Force is force. Okay, so the unit is Newton, but the subunit is going to be um, is going to be kilograms times meters per second squared, okay? So it's going to be mass times acceleration. Spring constant is newtons per meter. Newtons per meter. Uh, momentum is kilograms times meter per second. And then angular momentum is kilograms times meter per meter. Kilograms times meter squared per second. It's always, it's always easy for me to say meters per second squared because that's acceleration. So it's meters squared per second times kilograms for angular momentum. Energy, energy, um, that is a joule. That's the unit that they made up for it. But the subunit um, is joule, uh, is newtons times meter. N newton times meter um, is energy. Power, the unit that they created for it, of course, was the watt. And that's gonna be joules per second. So it's energy per second. Um, yeah, so angle is radian, angular velocity is radian per second, angular um, acceleration, ra radians per second squared, of course. Uh, moment of inertia, okay, this is one. It's, okay, so there's a gram tracker, so it's kilograms times me meter squared, kilograms times meter squared, okay? So that is moment of inertia, you know, it's very similar to, um, I believe, angular momentum. So it doesn't have the per second, okay? Torque, okay, it's not multiplied, but it's, it's Newton's, Newton X meter, okay? And I think uh, when, when it comes to torque, it's a, it's a matrix that you do between um, the force and the distance. And so that's why it's an X, not multiplication. Frequency, of course, it's gonna be cycles per second, also known as a Hertz. Angular frequency is just Hertz by itself. A uh, phase. Is just gonna be phase, okay. Surfing um, is a uh, radian, radian rad. Uh, okay, mass density that's gonna be um, kilograms times meter per second cubed. No wait, kilograms times no, <laughs> kilograms per meter cubed. I was thinking about velocity or acceleration. I don't know why. Mass density is kilograms per meter cubed. Number density is molecules per meter cubed pressure that is force over area so it's gonna be newtons per uh meter squared so that's pressure flow rate that's gonna be um flow rate or, or flow rate volume it's a volume so it's gonna be meters cubed per second time constant s young uh, modulus first time i ever saw that unit so it was totally new is uh newtons per or first time I ever said a concept is newtons per uh, meter squared, I believe. And the same thing for bulk modulus is newtons per meter squared. I don't know where you use those things. Um, so yeah, uh, okay. Um, specific heat, so we get into some heat stuff. Um, or that heat's energy. So um, it's gonna be joules per, okay, so there's parentheses, there's parents. So it's gonna be, um, so joules per, kilograms times kelvin okay so the numerator is joules denominator is kilograms times kelvin okay specific heat transformation is uh joules per kilogram heat of transformation is joules per kilogram and then lastly specific uh heat for gas that's going to be joules divided by parenthesis uh mole per kelvin mole per kelvin uh, so yes, so there you go. So I believe I got them all right. Um, 
maybe I know knew like uh, a little bit more than half of them. Uh, power, energy. <laughs> I didn't really know. They're really shaky. Torque as well. Inertia. Um, momentum, angular momentum. The the heat. This part over here was um, a little bit more. Uh, not the volume rate. These ones. Um, so yeah. So there you go. So it, it doesn't matter that you no, know, they're in a specific order. They can be in any order. I'll be able to recall it. And since I studied chemical engineering, I know how useful it is to know the units because you know if you have all these like equations, like fifty of them. You know, like okay, which one do I have to use for this problem? If you know what the answer is for that equation, or you know, if it's like you know F equals ma, if you know what F rep represents and what units it's in, then you know, okay, oh wait, I have that those variables in this problem, that might be one option for it. And so it's really useful to know the units, and it's something that you know people don't really give much thought to. But if you know the units, man, it just makes everything a lot easier because when you're multiplying and dividing. You know, like, oh, wait, you know, if I multiply by this value with this unit, it's going to give me this other unit. And so that's super helpful when it comes to science and engineering. And so I do recommend, you know, if someone's, if you're studying chemical, or if you're studying engineering, not just chemical engineering, or doing science, anything like that, um, learn the units because it makes it go a lot faster and it does help you out greatly. So, yeah, so I learned them all. Just wanted to show you that I did it. And so, yeah, so hopefully you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time.